Africa Rise Uganda Blazing a trail to rise success Widely known as the Pearl of Africa because of its exquisite natural beauty, diverse plant and animal population, and rich mosaic of cultures, Uganda today is drawing attention as a potential rice basket for Eastern Africa. Over the last few years, the country has been experiencing a remarkable rice boom, supported by good farming practices, premium market prices, and favorable policies, which have stimulated large private investment in the rice sector. The rice development has contributed to greater food security and a reduction in rice imports. For instance, according to the Ugandan government, rice imports dropped between 2005 and 2008, which helped save the country about 30 million U.S. dollars in foreign exchange earnings. The area sown to rice has nearly doubled from about 80,000 hectares in 2002 to about 150,000 hectares in 2011. Similarly, paddy production has shot up from about 120,000 tons in 2002 to more than 220,000 tons in 2011. Mr. Robert Onyan, Program Officer, Public-Private Partnership and Market Access at Susakawa Global 2000 said. Now, the industry has moved from seed to production to processing and to the markets. Yet 10 years ago, Uganda was barely known among the rice-producing countries of the region. So what triggered the rice transformation? In 2000 and 2001, when the price of maize plunged in the region, the Ugandan farmers and government desperately started looking for alternative crops for food security and income generation. Thanks to the timely help by Sasakawa Global 2000 and the National Agricultural Research Organization, narrow, short-duration upland varieties, including Narica rice varieties developed by Africa rice, were identified and Narica 4 was released in 2002. Dr. Jimmy Lamo, rice breeder at Narrow, who is actively involved in the Africa rice breeding task force, said, But we realize that from the year 2002 onwards, Nerica 4 took the market share in terms of area under production and preference. To an extent that by the year 2008, around 70% of area crop under upland was Nerica 4. Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni launched the Upland Rice Project in 2004 based on strong advocacy by the former Vice President Dr. Gilbert Bukenya who identified upland rice as a major strategic intervention for food security and poverty reduction. Subsequently, Upland Narica 1 and Narica 10 were released. The rice campaign encouraged several non-governmental organizations and development partners to join forces with the government. These include the Japan International Cooperation Agency, the United Nations Development Program, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, Oxfam, and the United States Agency for International Development, in addition to Sasakawa Global 2000. Major efforts were made by the government and these partners to promote rice and strengthen the capacity of rice farmers, millers, traders, and extension workers. The rice scheme also motivated private sector players such as Niseko Seed Company and FICA Seeds. Nikolai Rodens, managing director of Niseko the, Seed Company, said. One of the successes or one of the reasons why you get the success is, as I said, it's a public-private partnership. So the research organization has done a very big part into the ad adaptation of the varieties, so looking into the right varieties. Then the second part that has been uh, important is the seed companies were ready to take up the role as multipliers and also part in to commercialization. But very, very important is a kind of a subsidy scheme and promotional scheme that was put up by um, the political arm. So again, by the public uh, institutes. Naseko was instrumental in the production and dissemination of certified seed of Narica 4 under the brand Superica 2. Some of the other seed companies that are closely involved yeah. with the rice industry are Grow More Seeds, Pearl Seeds, and Victoria Seeds. 
the shift in government policy further stimulated rice production in the country and motivated the private sector to invest heavily in the sector. According to Mr. Robert Onyan, Uganda doesn't have the money to support subsidies. So the CET was the best way to promote rice production. And when we were able to protect the farmers from that uh, influx of uh, imported cheap rice, then production from uh, 83,000 hectares, which was in uh, uh, 1998, jumped to uh, 114,000 hectares. The focus gradually moved from increasing rice production to improving post-harvest handling, value addition and marketing. Mr. Oh, Vainu Gopal Pukat, director of Tilda Uganda Limited, one of the leading rice producing companies in the country said. Essentially the Tilda has been the policy which the East African community adopted, which uh, Uganda took the leadership in uh, making rice as a profitable, viable uh, crop and which has uh, proved very beneficial to Uganda and the East African region because food prices, uh, rice prices have significantly gone up. Tilda produces different types of rice to fill different market niches. Similarly, small entrepreneurs have seized the opportunity in Uganda to add value by developing niche products like parboiled rice, which is not common in Uganda. The public and private sector partners involved in Uganda's rice sector are conscious that agricultural intensification goes along with agricultural sector development and market integration at all levels. Mr. Philip E. Dro, former Ugandan ambassador to China and current director of Upland Rice Millers Limited said. And this success is not just because we are good businessmen in the sense, but it is because we have worked with the farmers and the traders and the financiers and the policy makers and NGOs along the whole train of uh, uh, value chain. The Upland Rice Millers Limited Rice Factory in Jinja, in eastern Uganda is helping rice farmers to become part of agribusiness networks through which they can sell surplus crops and invest in their farms. For example, rice farmers who bring their paddy to be milled at the factory find a ready market as they meet with rice traders at the same place. Ms. Joan Rutero, Program Director of Uganda Development Trust, UDET, observed. That, uh, as long as farmers have a market, they always respond positively to that market. So production does not become an issue. They will grow the crops as long as they know that they are able to sell them. UDET is a local NGO which has supported many small and medium rice enterprises by providing technical assistance or arranging agribusiness loans. Mrs. Joyce Lilamo Tema, a rice farmer from Gulu, affirmed. With rice, you can't go wrong. Each time you get a good yield, uh, in two, three months, you find that you have sold it all. Locally, you can sell it and also you can, uh, you can take it to the mill, the grinding mill. And then people also take it far and white. Uganda has about 850 small mills with polishers and whiteners and 15 medium-sized mills in addition to the large mill owned by Tilda. The boom in Uganda's rice production is partly due to the resurgence of the Kabimba rice scheme. Kabimba currently produces about 20,000 tons of rice per year, which is equal to 20% of the total rice produced in the country. Although rice schemes, such as Kabimba, are huge, they are still small compared to Uganda's total lowland rice potential of about 500,000 hectares are considered suitable for seasonal rice production. According to the National Rice Development Strategy projections, Uganda is expected to produce up to 335,000 tons in 2013 and 500,000 tons in 2018. Mr. Robert Don Young concluded, With everything in place, with the policy in place, with all actors in place, with support from Africa Rise, and the private sector, we can achieve this goal in the next five years. For more information, visit www.africarise.org.